Yeah, yeah. Happy Friday. How we doing? How you doing? Welcome bike Dynasty Fridays. Last week, we talked about the upcoming free agents. So the people that are going to be pleading for contracts, I think March 15th starts free agency. Well, I want to talk today about players that are playing on their contract year. Okay. Players that this year coming up, 2023, will be the last year of their contract. So they'll be free agents next year. Okay. And I'm not here to sit and talk about how players have increased motivation and their statistics skyrocket because they're playing for their contract year. And yes, you can make the case that like, okay, Josh Jacobs got his shit denied and he played best. Saquon did. There have been people on Twitter that are way smarter than me, way better with numbers that have run studies that show that it doesn't actually impact statistical performance. Like if you're an NFL player and you needed to wait five years into your career to get motivated and to have a career year because you're on the contract, that probably says more about you as a player than anything else. Okay. So I'm not here to tell you whether or not that actually matters. The reason I'm giving you this information is because it will impact like the incoming rookie class. It will impact like the free agents that sign in these particular landing spots with players who will be free agents next year as to their long-term outlook with this team. So we're going to run through quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends who are playing on their contract year. Because, listen, if we have a running back who's playing on his contract year and that team goes out and drafts a running back in the second or third round, you might say, damn, he's sitting behind this guy. But he's probably incrementally more valuable because this guy will be gone next year. This guy will not be this guy for much longer, okay? So we're going to go position by position. And as always, if you enjoy the video, hit the button that looks like this. Put the D in the subscribe button. We are doing everything NFL Draft Rookie Dynasty coverage for the next few months. Let's talk about thy quarterbacks, all right? Kirk Cousins, Ryan Tannehill, and Jalen Hurts are like the three quarterbacks that actually matter for fantasy football. Kirk Cousins with Minnesota. They continue to like nickel and dime him on these, I shouldn't say nickel and dime, but they continue to kind of string him along a little bit on these smaller deals. And depending on where they are next year, I wouldn't be surprised if he continues to stay in Minnesota. Again, I'm not I'm not here to like predict landing spots or whatever, because I can't do that for this year's crop of class. So to try to do it for next year's, I just want to relay the information and all of this contract information is available for free to you via Spotrack, S-P-O-T-R-A-C.com. I'll link that down below if you want to go check it out. It's a very, very cool resource that you can go uh, utilize. Absolutely free. Don't even have to open the wallet. Ryan Tannehill, Tennessee. I would be surprised if he ends up sticking around there in Tennessee. This team kind of in flux. I feel like their offense is almost always in flux and will absolutely be next year because not only is Tannehill a free agent, after this year, but so is Derrick Henry, which we'll talk about in a second. But Kirk Cousins, Ryan Tanhill, and then Jalen Hurts is the third one. And uh, I mean, it would be shocking if he's somehow not in Philadelphia. It would be the the bag fumble of the century if Jalen Hurts is not a Philadelphia Eagle for the foreseeable future. So those three, just keep in mind, have the names ready. Receivers, Traylon Burks, all these guys are relevant to Tannehill because if like Malik Willis takes over, then the value of these players, questionable. Running backs, this class, Remember, rookie contracts, these guys end the same years. If they don't get extended, then they become free agents in classes together. If a draft class is really strong, that means four or five years down the road, the free agent class is going to be really strong, and that's what we have here. But before we get to that DeAndre Swift, Jonathan Taylor class, top two guys, Derrick Henry and Austin Eckler. Derrick Henry, uh, I would imagine the Titans kind of want to like rebuild and get a new offense going in Tennessee. You know, he's going to be old by the time his free by the time this contract concludes. I have I have a feeling that we're going to see a a, a pretty um, kind of sad, a kind of sombering end to Derrick Henry's career. I feel like he's going to be someone like the final year of his career. His stat line is going to be like 270 carries, 3.2 yards per carry, and it's going to be really really difficult to watch it go down. You know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he just continues to put up 1600 yards per season on the ground and continues to eat souls and continues to ruin families and continues to be a beast and then just retires on his own terms. I don't know. I doubt it happens, but he does seem like a player who's uh, the, the, the way he plays the game. I don't know if it's going to age well, but that means keep an eye on what Tennessee does in the draft this year as it pertains to their rookie running backs. Hassan Haskins maybe gets a little bit of a boost if you're a fan of him. I always thought he was kind of a plotter that does bring some hard nosed football to the field, but not explosive, not elusive. He's not anything special in my opinion. Austin Eckler is the next guy on this list. Austin Eckler will be a free agent after next year. I feel like the Chargers should probably keep him around. He is a locker room guy. He's a great great person off the field. He is a great player on the field, of course. He will probably age pretty well because, one, he takes care of his body fucking phenomenally, and two, he's not a player who takes a billion hits because a lot of his work comes in the passing. A lot of his work 
you know, goes on the sidelines and shit like that. So Eckler, who knows? You know, they are, uh, there are a lot of reports about Keenan Allen possibly getting moved on from. So maybe they take some of their older players and they start to move on. And maybe they dra- they finally hit on a running back. Because right now, I mean, they've been trying for six years in a row. You got Josh Kelly and they have, I think they brought in Sony Michelle and they, I don't even know Sony Michelle's on the team anymore. They have Isaiah Spiller. Uh, who else is competing with Josh Kelly? There's some other fat, slow running back. Larry Roundtree. So listen, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, again, they try the running back route, a uh, secondary piece with Austin Eckler. But this year, because he's a free agent next year, I think whoever they take, regardless of talent, probably gets a little bit of a boost up because maybe he does earn the role for next year and you're paired with Justin Herbert for a long time. And this offensive line had some injuries, but at full strength, this is a, an offensive line where they invested a lot of draft capital into it. So they're going to be a really good offensive line for quite a while. So Austin Eckler, the other free agent. And then you have this class that pretty much all came in together. DeAndre Swift, Jonathan Taylor, Cam Akers, AJ Dillon, Antonio Gibson, JK Dobbins. I want to say Dillon might've been the year before that. Nope. All those came in the same class together. For some reason, my brain does not connect A.J. Dillon being in that draft class. I think I was so obsessed with those top five dudes, Swift, Taylor, Akers, Dobbins, Gibson, that I kind of just like let Dillon go to the wayside. So obviously a lot of moving parts there, but I just want to throw the names out there. These are like really, really good running backs, of course, for the most part. DeAndre Swift, can't stay healthy. We haven't seen Dobbins really put it together. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, obviously uh, a monster and can handle a workload, but we don't know where the Colts situation is going. Cam Akers, really well down the second half of the uh, 2022 season. So interested to see how things work out. Obviously, there's nothing really to take away here from these guys other than this entire draft class will be the free agent draft class if they don't get extended next year. Um, And obviously, some of them can be hit with the franchise tag. All going to depend on how they play this upcoming year. But again, something to be very cognizant of if the Lions draft a running back. what Do they re-sign Jamal Williams? Uh, Cam Akers, do the Rams draft a running back? Do the Colts draft a running back? Do the Ravens draft a running back? Very, very likely. That's a landing spot that will be in high demand if they draft a running back possibly let go of Dobbins after next year AJ Dillon the Packers situation is very much in flux Aaron Jones is not a free agent he's on his contract but they can get out of his contract this year and save 11 million dollars next year save 11 million dollars as well so there's a chance that they move him around if they're just like kind of redoing the offense right if they don't have Aaron Rodgers anymore maybe they say like let's you know start let's start cutting these players and redo the offense a little bit so I think that's something to keep an eye on so Jones not a free agent but they might make a move. And lastly, Antonio Gibson. I mean, his I, I don't know what he is at this point, but Brian Robinson maybe? Do they look to go with another back? Do they pair someone with Brian Robinson? Because they almost let J.D. McKissick go to Buffalo last year, and then they ended up pulling him back in. But if Gibson's gone, if McKissick is gone, opens up work for Robinson, I'd be surprised if they don't bring in another running back to complement with him. So, so far we have quarterbacks, Cousins, Tannehill, Hurts. Running backs, Henry, Eckler, Swift, Taylor, Aker, Akers, Dobbins, Dylan, Gibson. Strong-ass group. At wide receiver. We have Mike Evans, we have Tyler Boyd, Corey Davis, Curtis Samuel, Hollywood Brown, T. Higgins, Michael Pittman, Darnell Mooney. This is a group of dudes that I would not be surprised if we saw one, two, three of them moved before the end of next season. Maybe this offseason, like we've obviously heard the reports of T. Higgins possibly being a trade candidate because wide receiver contracts are fat. Wide receiver contracts need to be uh, lucrative, especially if you're playing at the level of a T. Higgins. Mike Evans, I could absolutely see being a trade candidate. Uh, candidate because Tom Brady has retired now and it's like okay yeah maybe Kyle Trask takes over and we'd like to have him with Evans and Godwin but Evans is obviously on the older side of his career and if you want to rebuild you could probably get some nice pieces for Evans. Tyler Boyd is kind of interesting because obviously he's like the the third piece there the fourth piece fifth piece in that offense but he's had some really really good years he's never going to be he shouldn't be the wide receiver one in your offense but like he can produce that way if asked. I would love Tyler Boyd like this slot receiver to come to Atlanta that's a player I would he's going to be an under the radar really good side signing for another team but you have both Cincinnati wide receivers Higgins and Boyd do they bring either both back unlikely so keep an eye on who the Bengals invest in in the draft this year if they do go the wide receiver route most people will be looking at it like "Ooh, that was a luxury pick but we're thinking long term here all right Joey B wide receiver two possibly in the draft let's see Corey Davis and eh, whatever it's Garrett Wilson season over there Curtis Samuel in Washington he hasn't really put together much anyways uh, so it opens the door for Terry and Jahan Dotson Hollywood Brown in Arizona is kind of interesting coming over from Baltimore D hop is obviously the guy there but they went a different direction coaching wise in Arizona this offseason Kyler Murray I don't know I don't know what they're doing with Kyler Murray there 
there. Um, so Hollywood could be another mover. He might just end up being like, I could see Hollywood end up being like a little bit like Brandon Cooks, where he just starts to hop around teams and goes from one place to the next to the next. Michael Pittman, I would like to see him re-sign in Indy. I think that they will likely draft a quarterback. I think they have the fourth or fifth overall pick. I've seen a lot of links to Will Levis, but you know, it could be Levis, it could be Shroud, it could be Bryce Young if he falls there. Uh, Michael Pittman, I think, probably needs to stay there because they don't really have anything else behind them. They they will probably go with the wide receiver in the draft as well, but it's like Alec Pierce. It's a lot of not, it's a lot of not a lot of good, put it that way. Uh, and then Darnell Mooney, Chicago. I, I think Chase Claypool might be a free agent as well, but it's like, I don't even know if it's worth talking about with those guys. So whoever Chicago decides to go with in the draft this year will be linked to Justin Fields for the rest of his rookie contract and could take over as the wide receiver one. What I think probably most likely leads to Cole Komet being like, a big time breakout candidate this year in fantasy football. He has been really, really good when he's got the chance. And if we move over to tight ends, he is on the list. But we saw a report come out last week saying that he is uh, likely to get extended. And I think that would be a good move because we've actually seen the chemistry between Fields and Komet. We've seen Komet produce and we've seen him be a stable part of this offense. That's what we need to do. We need to start putting stable pieces around Justin Fields. We need to start building the offensive line. We need to start building the pieces. And Komet is the first piece of that equation. So excited to see where they go wide receiver-wise. I hope they don't fucking whiff on this one again. I hope they stop doing the Nikhil Harry dance. I hope all that bullshit stops and we could fucking agree on a good player going to Chicago. But Cole Komet likely staying in Chicago. We've got Hunter Henry, Tyler Higby, TJ Hawkinson, Noah Fant, Gerald Everett, all going to be free agents next year this in incoming class of tight ends in this rookie class this this class is going to get drafted in april of this year very strong tight end class you don't have like a kyle pitts level of prospect but more often than not if you look at mock drafts around twitter around the nfl from respected people you're going to see three tight ends i've seen some where three tight ends go in the first round i've, I've seen a lot of them where for the most part three tight ends will go within the top 40 to 45 picks um, but this is a very 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 deep tight end class that is going to push this older wave of tight ends out i could see higby kind of being irrelevant but these guys are all interesting like Hawkinson obviously fits phenomenally in in Minnesota but they'll also have to re-sign Kirk Cousins and they have Dalvin Cook on a big contract who might get traded this offseason but Justin Jefferson they'll probably uh take a wide receiver in the draft this year um so moving parts maybe they resign him maybe they don't it makes sense that they traded for him that they would resign him that's typically what happens like when you want to make that push you trade for a guy in his final year of his contract knowing that you're going to extend him i think they should extend him but maybe they don't no fan athletic we've seen him have flashes but never really like you know came down with the full season we're excited about Gerald everett had a good year with the chargers this year i think that's probably going to be the best year of his career and if he doesn't resign with la his better days are probably behind him but this is like that that wave of guys we got excited about for a while that could be players in the NFL and uh, kind of just didn't work out for the most part, I think, for, for most of them, at least not hitting the ceiling that we came to expect. But this is a very, very deep tight end class in, in, uh, in the rookie class. So that will probably have a big impact on free agents for next year. And obviously, these are not all the free agents for this class. These are not all the wide receiver free agents, not all the running back free agents. I just thought they were the most notable as it relates to dynasty, as it relates to fantasy football. But again, you can go on to spotrack.com, S-B-O-T-R-A-C.com. That will be linked down below. You can go check out the free agents on your team, the free agents on your dynasty team, see what their contract situations look like over there. Go do yourself a favor. Listen, you're here to listen to me talk to you about it, but I think you'd be doing yourself justice if you did a little bit of work, right? Everybody wants to win a dynasty league, but don't want to do goddamn work it's not how it works out here we got to work in order for it to work okay i love y'all that'll be today's video i hope it was helpful i hope i wasn't just like fucking spewing for 15 minutes about nonsensical shit that you could have found on a different website for free yeah that's exactly what happened whatever all right subscribe to the channel if you're new here uh hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video i love y'all and i'll see you on monday